Assalamu alaikum Ramadan radio listeners you're tuned in to myself Zabanisa and I'm here with a guest speaker who I'll talk about shortly um you're tuned in to my show called The Joys and Struggles of Motherhood on Ramadan Radio 87.7 FM if you want to message you can WhatsApp us on 0774885055 or you can message on Facebook and Instagram as well. Today we have with us Rabia. Assalamu alaikum Rabia. Wa alaikum assalam Zabi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here. I was very excited. Alhamdulillah. I thought who else could I start the show with other than <laughs> Rabia for my first time show? <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. That's really sweet. And the the reason I called you on today was I wanted uh, first time mothers to have a voice. And mm-hmm. uh, you're you're obviously a first time mother like myself. Yeah, yeah, mashallah, my little one is 9 weeks old. So all the experiences of a first time mother are like fresh in my head. So instead I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. So your your um little one what's his name? Is Eunice. Eunice, Eunice. yeah. Um yeah. So my little one is about turning 9 months now. So we've got compar- we've got a comparison. Uh so you yeah. got you got 3 months of uh, with Rabia and 9 months from me. So mm-hmm. I'll just mm-hmm. I'll just introduce myself and then Rabia you can introduce yourself as well. Mm-hmm. So my name is Abunisa. I've born and bred in Leicester, even married here and I've and my my baby and myself were both born at Leicester General Hospital. So true Leicesterian. <laughs> and uh his name is Umar and he's 9 months old and at the moment we're going through the teething stage. So that's one of the challenges that we're going through at the moment. What about you Rabia, if you want to introduce yourself? So, I'm Rabia. Um I was actually born in Abu Dhabi, so my parents have traveled a lot. Uh so we lived in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and then we moved to Saudi Arabia and then from Saudi Arabia we moved to UK, uh specifically Bradford. So I've lived in Bradford for about 15 years and then I got married in moved to London. Um so I had my little one in London and um he's been uh, 9 weeks um today mashallah uh so yeah we just we just finished the newborn stage um he's uh, he's just kind of getting better at sleeping as well so he sleeps like for an hour and a half um which has been magical compared to like, what it was like 2 to 3 weeks ago um but um I'm exclusively breastfeeding at the moment and uh, literally as we speak I can hear him crying in the next room and all the time I'm thinking is he hungry is he hungry does he need me um but at the moment I have my mom my dad and my mother-in-law and my husband at home so Oh that's so good I think it's important you have that support you know people to look after him yeah cuz um uh, just this was the first weekend that we travel back to Bradford after having him um and the travel from London to Bradford is around four and a half hours uh so Masha he was really good on the drive uh and then we just didn't travel because I had one of my best friends uh wedding and it was again the first time I was going to leave him alone uh so I had like bottles prepared and never did I realize how much work that is I had so much respect for mom to bottle feed their babies so that was just like there's the washing there's the sterilizing there's the drying and then the process to start again every day so I was just like oh my goodness this is a lot of work um but alhamdulillah it was it was a really good experience it was really nice going out um and I was just saying to my husband like it felt like I was um back at uni you know when you just with your friends and you relax and you're just hanging out with them and just taking part in such a um amazing day like seeing one of your best friends get married so that was really really lovely it was um, probably a nice so break yeah. for you as well wasn't it yeah i was so nervous i did facetime him when i was at the wedding <laughs> and my friends were like probably just 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 enjoy the moment i was like i know i'm trying to do <laughs> but it was really really lovely um so it's given me the confidence that okay yes i can leave him home and i can go out for a few hours outside and it's like not the end of the world So these are just um, some of the challenges we face as a mum, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think I definitely had like separation anxiety at the start. Like I would not I could not be okay with him not being around me for more than 10 minutes. 
So I had to like always be around him, like even in the house, like in the same room. If I didn't see him, then I'd be like, is he okay? Like, why is he crying? Like, can anyone else like see him? Because sometimes I feel like it's just me. But now I've realized that no, actually people, people can like, and he's okay he's okay with everyone else as well it's not just me so how do you feel but, Robbie about being a first-time mom um alhamdulillah I feel like it's been amazing like it's been such a beautiful journey um I was a bit scared going into it just because um a lot of my friends have had babies and they've all had like mixed, mixed postpartum um experiences so uh, my pregnancy was really good it was quite uh, it was quite straightforward um and then postpartum has been really good as well but I think that's mainly because I had quite a lot of help I know for sure like if I didn't have the help the house would be a mess I would be a mess um it it would have a huge toll on me um so I feel really lucky to have the help um but even with the help it is quite tough um and I found it more tough emotionally because of the sleepless night. And then um, Eunice had like really bad rashes, like when he was just two weeks old. And then he had reflux. So, and then he also had a temperature. So I had to literally stay in the hospital overnight. And and because of COVID, I can only stay, like only one person was allowed to stay with him. So obviously I I was staying with him and it was quite challenging. but alhamdulillah, we got through it. He's a bit, he's more stable now. He's on medication. So that's, um, even that, just giving him the medication just breaks my heart because he hates it. But then you just know that in the end, like, it'll get better. Because um, they said that they usually grow out of it around five months. And I know, so for, you, I know for you that uh, it's only been three months, but do you feel like your life has changed quite a lot since having a baby? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but it's um, definitely a change that I love and I would not I would not change anything because um, you feel like every day you learn something new in motherhood. Like literally you would think one day, okay, I figured out this, 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 like, I figured out his cries, this is why he cries, and then the next day there's a new challenge. He's um, waking up every hour in the night. Then you have to figure out why that's happening, then so you overcome that, and then the next day maybe he's a bit colicky. So it's like you, you it's like every day is different, <laughs> but the but it's just worth it because you see everyone's reaction, you see how much you love your baby. Um, yeah, that that's that just makes everything worth worth it for me, and so yeah, alhamdulillah, like uh, it's it's the best thing. It's the best thing that's happened to me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Like um, for for yeah. my for myself, I think I struggled um, once I had the baby. I had mental health uh, problems uh, mm-hmm. straight after having the baby, which I'll talk about more in detail next week. But it, I suffered with something called postpartum psychosis. Um, mm-hmm. Have you heard of that before? Um, I did very, very briefly because one of my friends uh, went through it, but um, not to like the extent that you did. So she only had a brief, um, brief episode of it where she would think that the uh, like the baby has like she had a baby girl, so she had her in floral onesies. But one day she was like, "Oh my god, the onesies kind of look like blood." So she had a few hallucinations um but they they kind of went away um so she didn't really have it really severe but that's the first time I actually knew that was a thing uh, I knew that postpartum depression was a thing and postpartum anxiety was a thing but not postpartum like psychosis which which is crazy because so many women go through it after after I spoke to you about it and then I kind of researched it and I feel like it's not really spoken about as much. Um, even at like the maternity units and the the appointments that you go to, like it's not really spoken about that much. Um, so I think there definitely needs to be more light on the situation. Definitely. I think there needs to be more awareness generally as a whole about mental health and uh, mm. mental health and motherhood. Because even when I was quite ill, 
I was quite surprised that there wasn't that much uh, information out there. And uh, but I have to say the services are great. And when you do need them, they do step up and they do come out to help you. Oh, that's really amazing. That's, that makes all the difference. Like even after birth, when the health visitors used to come home and we didn't have to go to the hospital, I felt like that was such a good thing. Uh, because I know not in all countries they have this, like, uh, for example, USA, you still have to go into the hospital to have all these, like, checks done. And I can't, like, for me personally, I could not imagine getting dressed and taking them outside at, like, one week old. Um, so just having people come over to check up on you was really helpful. So that was really, really good. So how did uh, your whole, so from finding out that you were having a baby... To have to having a baby, how did that whole process go for you? So um, finding out was um, was the best surprise. I actually found out last Ramadan. So me and my husband were just saying, "Isn't it crazy?" Like last Ramadan, I was pregnant, and this Ramadan we have him. Um, so yeah, because we were planning, uh, so we were, uh, and we were like crying. So we were really excited for it, and everyone was really excited. Um, so this was actually my second pregnancy because I had a miscarriage previously. So because of that, I had a lot of anxiety in the first, I would say five months. Like I did not go out that much, plus COVID. Um, so I had like a lot of anxiety. I didn't even tell my friends I was pregnant till I had my, I think 24 week scan. Because that 24 weeks is like um, the viability week where, you know, like Elena said, if something was to go wrong, um, you know, if you were going to go into pretend labor, uh, there was a chance of survival. So I was literally thinking about that from day one of my pregnancy. I was like, I just want to reach 24 weeks, just reach 24 weeks. And then once I reached 24 weeks, then I actually like that enjoying my pregnancy. Um and then that's when I started buying things and telling people. That from then on, it was really good. But I found the first five months really difficult because, um, um, yeah, it just took me back to, to my miscarriage. And um, after after having him, the delivery, all of that, alhamdulillah, it was a really positive experience for myself. Um, and I know, like, not everyone goes through that because um, just a lot of my friends have had mixed experiences where some people had really positive ones, some really challenging ones. Um, so I felt like I'm quite, quite blessed um, to have a positive, positive postpartum and pregnancy uh, and delivery. Um, but then you have other challenges because... Um, with with his uh, reflux and stuff, I feel like that's a challenge that we're kind of going through because um, we he doesn't sleep flat, so he always has to be in someone's arms, and um, especially at night time, that can get really tiring. But alhamdulillah, with the whole journey, it was really really positive. Um, I I really enjoyed it, and um, inshallah, like uh, I wish that. Any future ones are kind of similar. How about your How about your experience in pregnancy and delivery and postpartum? Alhamdulillah, with the uh, pregnancy, I, f- I found pregnancy and uh, delivery quite easy. Um, I was quite surprised. I think it was because I uh, pre- prepared quite a lot. So I feel like the key thing for anybody out there who is preparing for motherhood would be mentally prepare yourself because when you become a mother. Um, it's a, a very different experience. It's not something uh, you can be prepared for, and there will be lots of challenges that come your way. Um, so when it came to pregnancy, I was okay. When it came to giving birth, I was okay as well. Um, it was relatively short labor. Um, when it came to the delivery of baby and coming home, when it came to coming home, actually, um, I was okay maybe for the first week, um, then after that, I kind of uh, became severely ill. Um, it was more due to sleep dep- deprivation. And uh, like everyone tells you, when, when you get married, everyone tells you that, oh, marriage is about compromise. 
and uh, you you sort of uh, for the first year trying to figure out what do they mean everyone just keeps on telling me marriage is about compromise and then when you have a baby everyone sort of tells you um sleep when the baby sleeps and you're thinking what do they mean sleep when the baby sleeps did you get that sort of advice as well rabia yeah 100% <laughs> Um, I still do, <laughs> and I'm just like I can't sleep when the baby sleeps. So the baby's sleeping on me, but um, I definitely get it. I get like um, I completely agree with the, the mental preparation that you need to do. Um, the way that I did that was just taking some classes, so birthing classes and feeding classes, and just um, bathing a newborn, and and we. My husband and I actually took a few classes together, which is really nice to bond um, and educate ourselves. So that was really, really good. Um, what what I found yeah. with those classes, though, uh, they were focusing more on like pregnancy and labor. They didn't really focus mm-hmm. on the after, meaning uh, being at home the first 10 days or the first 40 yeah. days. Yeah, um, the specific ones that I chose were like the after ones. Um, I didn't really go with the hospital ones that they gave. I, I actually went with the Baby Academy ones because um, it just randomly popped on my Instagram one day and I was like, okay, let's have a go. Um, so they had the, oh, sorry, um, yeah, my mom just came and I was seeing if she's okay. Um, so... Yeah, so I chose the Baby Academy ones, and honestly, they were really, really good. I didn't expect them to be... I had really low expectations. Um, I didn't expect them to be very informative. I thought they were very generic. Um, But alhamdulillah, they were quite good. Uh, And it gave me a lot of um, comfort knowing that other people had the same questions as I did. Like, I wasn't the only one who was like clueless of what temperature they're about to be or you can't use anything on a baby's skin for the first six weeks um, and all of these different different um, things that we need to go by which were just guidelines obviously you can tailor them to yourself um, and to be honest I used a little bit of it but not that much I think it was just a mental thing for me if I took classes I felt more confident um, so that kind of helped me be a bit prepared for what was to come. Um, but of course, they can't teach you everything. The thing now is like something new. I'm constantly on Google, just Googling everything. <laughs> is this normal or by this, you know, what does this mean and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, one thing I I obviously didn't get to experience because of COVID was like the, the partner physical classes that you would go to that you see in movies and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the only thing that's, that's, didn't some, do. that's something we sort of missed as well. We definitely would have wanted to have that um, partner yeah. interaction. Yeah, with other parents or parents-to-be, um, that would have been really, really good. So that's the only thing that we missed out on. Um, but other than that, I personally found the classes good, but I think it was just more for me rather than like the, the knowledge. Um yeah, they they were they were quite they were quite good. So, yeah, what else did you do to um, like prepare for baby? With us, we sort of uh, were making lists of things we needed. We were taking part in these classes, and uh, I think we overdid it with the classes. So, for me, our classes were more focused on uh, pregnancy and labor. So, I think mm. I mentally prepared myself for pregnancy for labor. But when it came to having like the after being at home, um, I think that was one thing that we I maybe didn't prepare for too much. But obviously, mm-hmm. I don't think as a mum, you can prepare yourself too much. There's always going to be, like you said, a challenge um, that will come your way. And it's just with how you deal with it, right? Yeah, 100 percent. There's nothing that can prepare you for this. I think the best tool you can have is... Um, your friends and family around you because especially if they've had a little one um sometimes that could be good sometimes that could not be good because <laughs> you then it's you're kind of prone to lots of advice um but uh, yeah i think just having people around is good even if they can hold the baby for like 10 minutes and you can just go have a shower or eat 
um, I think after after that in that sense is really really important. Um, so yeah, like for example, I had no preparation for like what to how to deal with a colicky baby, and then Eunice has a little bit of colic, um, so that was a huge learning experience for both myself and my husband. Uh, so now we kind of know the telltale signs of it because at first we were just like, "What's going on?" or like, "How do we do them? Why does he only get bad at night time?" Um, and then you just kind of slowly just learn, and you also learn that everything's very temporary and everything's got like a time a time span that you have to just kind of you know bear with it, and then things just get better at like. Week, twelve weeks, three, you know, like six months, etc. So that's something that's helpful to me because I'm like, okay, when he completes like twelve weeks, inshallah, like he'll be a bit more stable. I, um, I bet you don't like me. I bet you don't want him to go, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I thought this was just me to like book some of my friends. Um, I think he was one time like what he just turned one month and he was sleeping. And I was looking at my phone at his newborn pictures and crying, like just full on crying. My husband was worried. He was like, why are you crying? And I was like, nothing. I'm just so sad that he's growing so fast. But you're also so grateful. But you're also sad. It's such a weird feeling. I never thought I would be uh, this emotional because um, before before when you're like with other kids, you're so like, so you're like, oh, baby, cute. You stay with them and that's it. But when it's your own, it's, like first of all you take a million and one pictures and then you just want to capture every single moment and yeah and when you see those changes you're just like oh, he's not a new one anymore like I'm never going to have that again with him um, but I think that's one of the things that I like one of the feelings that I hold on to because it makes me cherish every moment with him, even when he's like really clinging. All he wants to do is just be with me. I never like think, oh gosh, can someone else hold him? Um, it's always like, oh, he needs me because he's like, he just knows me well. He's, you know, he's just entered this world. And as soon as babies enter this world, like they're getting poked and prodded and like everything's happening to them and you're their safe space. So I just keep reminding myself of that and it just makes the hard moments really special as well. Um, I think it's just remi- it's remind reminding yourself it. they're not going to be long for, uh, they're not going to be young for a long time. Yeah. And just having that patience, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because um, as, as I know some of my friends say that they regret like not not um, cherishing those moments to the, to, the, to the maximum, really. Because they were just Stress, or they had um, postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression, and they felt like they lost that time with their baby. So, yeah, it, it makes me. And the same went with my pregnancy as well. Like, even though I had up and down days, um, and from in my pregnancy, I think the emotional aspect was was more challenging because I was just very, very sensitive throughout my pregnancy. Um, but even through that, like, I took loads of pictures and um, just tried to enjoy it as much as possible, even with all the anxiety I had about what if, you know, like, what if this happens, what if that happens. During pregnancy, you have such little control, and you have to leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of your baby and to give your body the strength to grow this baby and birth him. Alhamdulillah. So, you, yeah, alhamdulillah. And saying that, like, even the postpartum, like, um, it's just, I'm just blown away by how amazing, like, women are in general. Like, to give birth and then to, like, look after a baby and to heal and to learn all of this and then to manage a house. Um, doing it all at once. It's like, um, yeah, I just have so much more and new respect for mothers. Definitely. And then I don't like, think uh, before when uh, I wasn't a mother, I didn't realize how much mothers go through, how much they do. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's it's not even um, what we see. It's like what we don't even see, like the sleepless nights, um, the anxiety, the the emotional aspect of it, and then on top of that, you've got just just kind of going along with your life with this new responsibility with 
healing because postpartum can, you know, full, full healing process is like 18 months. So it's like you're still healing from it. Um, but you're just, you're just going on about your day and it's like, it's amazing to me. And then your body bounces back after like six, seven months and it's like, like, it just is, um, almost like it is a miracle, really. And as it mums, comes. we go through so much. So for instance, I was telling my husband, uh, oh my God, I've put on so much weight since giving birth. Mm. Um, you've noticed so many different changes and I think it's, uh, you just have to not ne- not get put down, just uh, just go with the flow, I say. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I feel like um, before, before Eunice was here, when we were preparing his um, like cupboard and where his clothes were going to go, I was so particular. I was like, I want this, 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 and um, everything needs to be perfect. As soon as you came, all your focus is on this baby. Like, you don't care about anything else. Like, I don't care what, where his things are. Like, as long as he's happy, as long as he's relaxed, and, and and has all his needs met like that literally it'll just make my day just, if he's a happy baby I'm like that, that's a job well done so I take for today um, so yeah yeah definitely like it's, it's, uh, yeah my brother do so much my eyes are definitely, open. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I, feel, I feel the same way um, and, and I think like we've got one child like in Shalom and we have more like Mothers with like multiples, like I don't know how they do it. I guess we'll find out in shallow one day. Yeah, we will in shallow. <laughs> Was there any tips you'd give for a uh, first time mum? Um, yeah, so just cherish each moment, even though it's hard, and always ask for help. Um, whether that's from family, whether that's friends, whether that's help visitors, lactation consultants. Um, just even when you're at the hospital, just make the most of any help that you get. Because um, if you're more relaxed, the baby's just going to be more more happy as well. Because they can feel your energy as well. And if something doesn't work out the way that you planned, um, just embrace it because it it wasn't meant to be. So, and also all the advice, um, it it you can tailor it to yourself. So if they say that a baby should be sleeping three hours and feeding every three hours, but your baby's feeding every hour, it's okay. Like, um, that's what they need for themselves. Um, I feel like sometimes um, they have this chart of, you know, a baby should be sleeping, a newborn should be sleeping like 18 to 20 hours a day, and then you maybe your newborn is a bit more active, and then you're like, okay, am I doing something wrong? Like, why is my newborn not sleeping? Um, but yeah, just just kind of go with the flow of things. Ask for lots of lots of help, and uh, if classes are your thing, I would I would recommend taking the aftercare classes just because it gives you a bit more confidence. Um, so yeah, how about you? Like, do you, do you, did you do stuff that really really um, helped you? Um, like postpartum or delivery for like for tips i would mainly say uh just go with the flow don't be hard on yourself um when i was quite ill the advice i got given was be kind to yourself be kind to each other meaning yourself and your husband and just be kind to others um it's a new experience you're going through and nobody said it's going to be easy and uh it's a new responsibility as well so do your research, take it easy, and don't be too hard on yourself. That that's the main thing that I'd say because I think mm-hmm. when it when it comes to being a mum, it's a lot mum and even a dad as well. It's a lot of responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. So take on that responsibility and ac- accept help, it, whether that's from the services, whether that's from your family. Um, just ask for help yeah. and don't be afraid. Yeah, I completely agree about the help. Like, the help is, like, number one, number one tip. Like, even if you can prearrange, um, you know, someone coming over to stay with you for the first six weeks, whether that's family member or even, like, having 
prepared meals and froze them like in time so you don't have to cook at that that time like you might because you never know how, what type of delivery you're going to have um, my delivery almost reached to the point of a c-section so i was just thinking like imagine it did like then you're just in bed for a good few days like you can't get out of bed so you just never know what type of delivery you're going to have to just be fully fully prepared um so yeah I have to say um, I have to say the one thing I'd I'd want all mothers to know is be prepared for the first 6 weeks uh, for the recover that's the 6 weeks that you need recovery so in that time in particular don't be too hard on yourself and accept all the help that you can yeah yeah the first 6 weeks is is yeah the the most challenging by far Definitely, definitely. Um, and it's like um, something happens after six weeks and the babies are so relaxed. <laughs> it's just like, oh my goodness. Everyone was saying the first six weeks is difficult and now I completely get it. Like my dad yeah. my dad said to me, they, uh, they're they gelling with you and you're gelling with them. Yeah, <laughs> they're getting to know you, you're getting to know them. <laughs> yeah, so. That's true, that's true. Um, how, how did... Um, being a new mom and then like a new dad for your for your partner, like how did that change your relationship? So I feel like when you become a new parent, uh, your two perspectives are highlighted a lot more, and then you mm-hmm. just have to sort of adapt and compromise with your parenting styles, and uh, mm-hmm. I feel like for me. Uh, my husband is very attached to our son now and mm-hmm. I I didn't realise that from when you're going through this parenting journey and when you're going through motherhood and you're going on these classes, you don't realise how uh, attached uh, and how much responsibility the husband feels. So mm-hmm. it's kind of opened my eyes about motherhood and also about fatherhood, how the husband feels and how they take on the responsibility, mashallah, um, yeah. He's uh, doing very, a great job, mashallah. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. I I feel like um oh, oh, sorry, Zebi, just hold on my mother and daughter. This this is what happens. This is uh motherhood. I'm, yeah, like um I think he's uh, he's he's been crying for a while, so I know he's gonna be hungry. He had a really good nap, and then, yeah, I think I think he's just hungry now, so you might hear a bit of crying, so apologies for that. No problem. This um, is motherhood. You can't, you can't yeah. plan... <laughs> I have to say, you can't plan everything. No, really, you can't. Um, everything is, like, very limited in time. I think if you get, like, 30 minutes to yourself, that's amazing, and I think that's what I had. You, you've minutes. done quite well right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes. Um, as I was saying, like, yeah, with the, with the husbands, I feel like they are really ignored in this whole process. Uh, even when I was at the hospital, um, they just used to ask me, "How are you feeling? Like, do you want something to eat?" Oh, oh, I to... just a second. I'm just going to see if I can be right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can hear Yunus. I think he has something to say. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think uh, Yunus had something to say there, Robia. Yeah, I think he always does. He's very opinionated. Bless him. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, so when we were at the hospital, even my husband used to, he used to just joke around and he used to be like, oh, I feel like um, I'm invisible because everyone used to come. And then everyone used to ask me how I'm feeling, but like no one asked him or like no one asked him for food or anything. That's, so, that's very, um, very true. Yeah. So then, then also just like you need to give that time to your husband as well. And also for the first few I was just in the first month um, because you're in this whole bubble with your new little baby. Um, I definitely felt like I didn't give him 
that much time at all. And then later on, I felt really bad. I was like, oh no, like I've just been so focused on baby that I forgot to be like, you know, ask him how he's doing or like how he's feeling. Um, and then when you kind of, when you have a bit of a routine off, then you kind of snap up with it. So I, I would say for like first time moms, just to remember that you have things there as well. Um, so yeah, like that, that was one thing that I, I never expected that that happened. Like I was just so focused on the, so I felt like I, I kind of, uh, uh, like just lost touch in that area. And then, Alhamdulillah, like with you, with us, um, my husband was quite supportive because I was became quite ill. He was quite supportive, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I don't think I forgot him. But I know that a lot of mums, when they become uh, mums, they just focus on the baby, and then there's always people saying that, "Oh, uh, don't you, you're going to be feeling left out to the husband." Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's but it can definitely happen. Like, uh, I didn't expect this at all. And I know, like, some, some of my friends kind of went through the same thing as well. Um, but it's, um, it's crazy because everything that you go through, you learn so much. And I'm saying this now, like, you know, inshallah, when we have these babies, like, you've learned so much. But I'm sure there's going to be new challenges then that will say the same thing. Like, oh, I've learned so much. I feel like motherhood is just... Um, just a learning curve like you just you go into it uh blindsided and, and it's just such a beautiful journey um that you just grow because you just basically grow with your little one and um you just uh you just make the most out of every day everyone says that uh when they turn like six months and onwards uh it, it's more on the fun side because like a lot of their colleague kind of subsides and reflux subsides so I'm quite excited for that time but also at the same time I I, I don't want him to grow up that fast <laughs> so it's like a double-edged sword. I think everyone asks me what's the most challenging time obviously I can't speak for everyone because uh, yeah. mine is only nine months um, but for me it had to be the time where the first six weeks I think so far the most challenging time for me was the first six weeks for sure. Um, I think it's just like the first steps into motherhood, where you have you have your sleep deprived, um, you're having a baby that needs you all the time. So definitely that was the most challenging for me. Is there a time that was the most challenging for you so far, or is it all smooth sailing? <laughs> the time that was the most challenging is when. They have the hospital on my own with them for the first half of time. So when we came back uh, after labor and delivery, um, I always had my mum's help and my mother-in-law's and my husband's help with me. So from changing diapers to giving him a bath to uh, like soothing him. Um, and then when we had to take him to a then they said he has to be admitted. And not just admitted that he's got blood being taken out of him, then medicine being given to him. And when you see a little baby in so much pain, you're already like so upset about it. But then at the same time, you're like, okay, this is the first time I'm going to be alone with him. And it's the first time you see if you can do it on your own. So it was that was really, really tough for me. But at the same time, it gave me the confidence of, oh, actually, I can, I can take care of him. So even when I have um, no one, as in uh, to to do the small stuff with him, so that was that was definitely challenging emotionally as well. Because I think I was only two weeks postpartum, so I was healing myself, and like my hormones were just everywhere, and I was just getting the hang of things. And then when he when your little one's not well, like you kind of take a dip and do the emotions there. Um, so that was definitely the hardest, hands down the hardest thing uh, so far. But. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think with these uh, challenges, there's, uh, I think I'd have to say there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
for um, for everyone. So uh, Alhamdulillah, you can do it. Uh, don't be put off by anything we've said today. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's um, it's crazy because if you told me before that I could survive on like three hours of sleep and just be a functioning human being the next day, I would be like, there's no way. But when it's clear that it's easy, like you literally, um, you don't mind. Like you would just do anything for them and and it's, it's okay. Like the sleep is nice or... Um, the diapers or like getting weed on, especially if you have a boy, um, it you just don't mind it, and you you, you really, I feel like you'll remember these memories, as fun memories. Because when I like uh, when I tell my parents this, they're like, oh yes, like we went through it when when you know you were little and when your brothers were little, we went through this, this, and this, and then you have that time um, like to bond over this new new step that you've taken in life as well so no matter how motherhood is like I when I had him I remember thinking I bet like to have lots of kids like I get it like before I used to be like you know when people have lots of people it's just a challenge like it must be so hard um but now it's like oh I get it it's just the reward outweighs the struggle by a hundredfold so yeah, alhamdulillah. And I feel really like, um, especially like in Islam as well, like your kids are could be your such a barrier, and and you know they they can be your gate to heaven if you know inshallah. So I feel like in that time it's even more special. Um, so yeah, and just taking care of them is such a blessing as well. Like I feel like if you think of all of these constantly, um, how much reward you're getting just by holding a baby, making them smile, feeding them, taking care of them. You soon realize that it's, uh, all the struggles are very, very small in comparison to the big rewards that you're getting. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely feel like motherhood is definitely challenging, but in the best way, if that makes sense definitely definitely i'd say that uh when you're becoming a mother you're making a uh, you make a big sacrifice um you want the best for your child and you will do anything and everything you can for your child yes 110 percent 110 percent um like you definitely just you just want the world for them um like already I'm thinking I can't wait to take him swimming, I can't wait to take him to all these places, travel with him, um, just show him a life that he's useful and where he can feel happy. And, um, and at the moment you are the world for your child, right? Oh my goodness, yes. That's such a beautiful way to put it. So yeah, yeah. And it's just a special feeling to be someone that you can give so much comfort to uh, your baby, you know, like your baby finds so much comfort in you. I find that so special. Like I would not like change that the world. Um, so especially like when crying or, and then you're the only one who can see them. It, it's so special because it's like the baby recognizes you. I remember when he was first born, and you know how babies cry when they're first born, and as soon as they put him on my chest, he stop crying immediately because he recognized my voice when I was talking to him. And I've heard this in my movies and I've seen it and, you know, I've heard about that side of it. But when you experience it yourself, it's like unbelievable. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really beautiful journey. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Sorry, Rabia, I have a bit of a cough over here. It's all right. So is there any last thoughts you'd say about motherhood for those who uh, are first-time moms? Um, I would say it's the most beautiful journey. And um, they say that the, I think they say that the days are long, so the years are short. Um, meaning that some days it could be being like challenged, 
Uh, uh, Jazakallah so much, Rabia. We're running out of time now. Um, okay. But Jazakallah for coming on air. And thank you so much for having me. Jazakallah.